In the Victorian era, somewhere in the South Pacific, there were two young cousins named Richard and Emmeline Lestrange. They were on a sailing journey with Richard's dad, Arthur, heading to San Francisco. But things took a crazy turn when their ship suddenly caught fire. It was chaos, with smoke everywhere and thick fog making it hard to see. The ship's cook, Patty Button, gathered the children in a lifeboat and move away from the wreckage. Unfortunately, amidst the dense smoke, heavy fog, and chaos, they become separated from the children's father, who manages to escape on a separate small boat, leaving them adrift at sea. After a day or two, they finally reach the shores of a beautiful tropical island. Taking charge of the children, Patty becomes their guardian and, over an unknown period, teaches them essential survival skills like finding food and constructing shelter. However, despite his efforts, he can't stop them from playfully removing their shirts and running around partly unclothed. Who needs clothes when you have nature's own fashion line? One day, Patty stumbles upon a stone altar drenched in blood and the remnants of a potential human sacrifice. Concerned for their safety, he warns the children to steer clear of that place, explaining that it's against the rules, and there's a mythical figure, the Boogeyman, residing there. Additionally, he advises them to avoid consuming a particular scarlet berry that Emmeline discovers, likely to ensure they don't eat anything potentially harmful. He refers to them as never-wake-up berries. The memory of briefly having the berries in her mouth lingers in Emmeline's mind throughout the entire time. One day, Patty stumbles upon a barrel filled with alcohol that has washed ashore from a sunken ship. With the children by his side, they have a little playful celebration that night, dancing around a fire. However, it's quite evident that Patty has had a bit too much to drink. Later, when the children doze off, Patty takes the barrel and swims to a smaller nearby island. What a responsible adult he is. The next morning, the children wake up and notice Patty lying on the sand. Mistakenly thinking he's simply asleep, they gently turn him over, only to discover that he has tragically passed away due to excessive drinking. As if the shock wasn't enough, a crab unexpectedly emerges from his mouth, causing Emmeline to faint. Richard carries her back to their hut on the island, where she pleads with him to take her away from this place. Determined to create a new life, Richard and Emmeline gather all their belongings and row to the other side of the island. There, they find a different stretch of beach to settle on. United by their reliance on each other and the abundant resources the island provides, Richard and Emmeline grow into resilient teenagers. Their days are filled with diving for pearls and fish, gathering food, and maintaining their treehouse a true testament to their survival skills and strength. It seems like the kids managed to live like this without getting sick or injured all these years. Richard and Emmeline spend most of their time together, but as they grow up, they start experiencing physical and emotional changes that confuse them. Being children, they don't fully understand these changes, which leads to frustration and confusion. One day, while swimming, Emmeline gets her first menstrual period, and she calls out to Richard in fear. Initially embarrassed, she yells at him and tells him to leave. Meanwhile, Richard finds himself developing physical attraction towards Emmeline. However, Emmeline, although afraid of being alone, doesn't share the same feelings for Richard, which makes him feel rejected. In his solitude, Richard engages in self-pleasure. One day, Emmeline's curiosity leads her to explore the forbidden side of the island. There, she discovers a stone idol resembling a moai, stained with what appears to be blood. Later, she shares her belief with Richard, suggesting that Patty was mistaken and that the idol represents God, who bleeds like Jesus. However, Richard scolds her for breaking the rules and disobeying the law. They often talk about getting rescued and going to San Frisco to reunite with Richard's father. However, when a ship passes by the island for the first time in years, Emmeline deliberately chooses not to light the signal fire they had prepared. Why did she make that in the first place if she didn't use it? Richard comes out from his search for food just in time to witness the ship sailing away, leaving him both disappointed and furious. He confronts Emmeline in anger, questioning her actions. Emmeline insists that the island is their home now and suggests they should stay, which Richard finds hard to believe. Their frustration escalates and they exchange insults. In a heated moment, Emmeline reveals that she knows what happens when Richard goes off alone, provoking him to throw a coconut at her. In response, she throws one back, accidentally hitting him on the head. Oops, I guess that was a little nutty. 
Realizing her mistake, Emmeline rushes to his side, but he responds by slapping her and uttering hurtful words, wishing she was dead and buried. Consumed by anger, Richard forcefully kicks her out of their house, tossing her belongings onto the beach. What a drama king. Emmeline, having constructed a simple shelter near the shoreline, accidentally steps on a stonefish, sending her into a life-threatening condition. Richard stumbles upon her weakened state and is deeply concerned. Despite the strict rules they've adhered to, Emmeline implores Richard to take her to what she perceives as a divine presence, defying the established law. Fearing the worst, Richard agrees and carefully places her on a stone altar, uttering fragments of prayers from his memory. Miraculously, Emmeline gradually recovers her health. Once she can walk again, they venture into the lagoon for a refreshing swim together. Following their aquatic escapades, they find themselves sitting side by side, unclad, indulging in some juicy fruit, and sharing their first tender kiss. Their affection for one another intensifies, leading them to explore physical intimacy and passionate love. Ignoring their previous conflicts, they become inseparable, spending most of their waking hours enjoying each other's company, whether frolicking in the water or indulging in their newfound desires. However, their blissful bubble is burst when Emmeline starts experiencing unfamiliar bodily changes and cravings, signaling her pregnancy. Emmeline and Richard remain oblivious to the concept of childbirth, initially attributing the changes to mere weight gain. One evening, Emmeline mysteriously disappears, leaving Richard worried and searching the jungle in desperation. Guided by the distant sound of drums, he stumbles upon the very same altar where they believed God resided. To his horror, Richard witnesses a native tribe conducting a ritual involving a human sacrifice. Filled with fear, he quickly flees the scene, but the haunting cries of Emmeline reach his ears, leading him to her location just in time. There, amidst the turmoil, Richard supports Emmeline as she goes through the process of giving birth to a baby boy, whom they lovingly name Patty. It seems like Richard is a builder, a sailor, a chef, and a nurse all in one. They bring the baby back to their house and attempt to nourish him. However, they face challenges as the baby incessantly cries and refuses to consume solid foods or juice. Feeling exasperated, Emmeline cradles the baby in her arms and discovers that he instinctively latches onto her breast for nourishment. Luckily, they were naked all the time for this to happen so quickly. Richard shares with Emmeline the unsettling incident he witnessed on the night of their child's birth and reassures her that he will defend them with his spear if any natives try to harm them. Surprisingly, no natives ever venture to their side of the island. How convenient! As the baby grows, they lovingly teach him how to swim and engage in playful activities together. One day, while enjoying a muddy escapade near the shoreline, they spot a ship led by Richard's father approaching the island. However, covered head to toe in mud, Arthur fails to recognize them. Patty excitedly points towards the ship, but as Richard and Emmeline catch sight of it, they exchange silent glances and abandon their previous intentions of leaving the island. With Patty in tow, they retreat into the forest, bidding farewell to the prospect of rescue. Richard ventures out to the small island where Patty Button had passed away. He reaches the shoreline and comes across Patty's skeletal remains, which have been bleached by the sun and are now lying on the sandy beach. Richard cautiously reaches out and touches the ribs, comparing them to Patty's and examining the bones in his hands. In this moment, a somber realization dawns upon him, suggesting that he has gained a deeper understanding of both his own mortality and the concept of death. One morning, the young family decides to take the rowboat to their original home site and gather essential supplies. Richard heads off to collect bananas, while Emmeline and the baby explore the nearby shoreline. Without Emmeline noticing, young Patty collects scarlet berries and keeps them in his pocket. I am surprised this didn't happen until now, considering that the parents were actually children themselves. They all return to the boat to wait for Richard, but unfortunately, they are caught off guard by the rising tide. As Emmeline falls asleep, the boat drifts away, carried by the current. A responsible mom in action, Emmeline wakes up to the sound of Patty splashing one of the oars into the water and desperately tries to retrieve it with the other oar. Failing in her attempts, she calls out to Richard, who starts swimming towards the boat, with a shark dangerously trailing behind him. Where did the shark come from? Just as Richard is about to reach the boat, 
Emmeline hurls the last oar at the shark, striking it and buying Richard some precious time to get out of the water. It seems like the shark simply decided to leave them alone after that. Left with only their hands, they attempt to paddle towards the shore. However, the relentless strength of the tide proves too formidable, and they dare not swim due to the fear of a shark attack. Gradually and inevitably, the boat is carried farther out to sea. After sailing for a day or two, Richard and Emmeline wake up from a nap to discover that Patty has consumed the berries he collected earlier. Panicked, they try to make him spit them out, but it's too late. He has already swallowed them. I bet signaling for help when they had the chance sounds like a better option now. As another day passes, young Patty struggles to stay awake and eventually falls into a deep sleep. Determined but resigned to their fate, Richard divides the remaining berries between Emmeline and himself, and they lie down together, awaiting their impending demise. Not long after, a large schooner comes into view. Arthur Lestrange and the ship's captain approach in their own dinghy, reaching the rowboat. It seems like the father didn't give hope, and he was still searching for them after all these years. What a cool father. Observing the young couple and their child lying still, Arthur asks the captain, Are they dead? The captain replies, No, sir, they are asleep. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. If you enjoyed it, why not consider subscribing? By subscribing, you'll never miss out on the thrilling content that awaits you in the future. Curious to find out what happened next? Discover if the young family survived or not. Dive into the captivating sequel of this movie by watching the first video linked here. If you're intrigued by generational tales, don't miss the second video, where an exciting adaptation of this film takes place, offering a fresh perspective on the story.